Working with the camera in Harmony can give us some pretty impressive animation results when we do so. But to work with it, what is really useful is to be able to see a little bit more of what's going on than just simply our standard camera view. I'm going to turn off Lightbox so I can see all my artwork in its glorious uh, beauty. And what we want to do is to look at our view from the top. And we also have an option to look at it from the side. And while we are arranging things, we'll probably be alternating between the camera view, the top view, and the side view. If you have a big enough display, you can be looking at all of those at the same time. I unfortunately do not. So I'm a little short. Now, if I'm in any one of my windows, I can choose additional options to look at it. So while I am here, I could switch over and say I want to be able to see the side view instead and alternate between the timeline and the side. But I'm preferring, because I'll be adding in keyframes and moving across time, to leave my timeline view. So I'm going to add my side view up by my camera view. And then up by my library and tool properties, the default two that show up in the top right corner, I will add in a top view. Now, what I like about, oh, let's actually I have to get rid of the side view. You can't have the same view in two windows right now. So I'm going to add the side view. Whoop. Lost my camera view. Whoops. Wrong button. So choose the camera view, then I'll choose my side view. So side view, top view, timeline, back to camera. Now, as I'm looking at my view of the camera, this black frame is showing me this is what I get to see on my frame. When I look at the top view over here, this black line represents what would be called my picture plane. Anything above that is going to be receding off to the distance. Anything below that is going to be closer to me, the camera, which is designated at this little point right here. That is my camera's field of view. On the side, I can see my layers as they are arranged. Now, as I want to set up my layers and work with them and start to build space, currently all my layers are flat. They're all arranged in this viewpoint. And what I want to do initially before adding in my camera and starting to fly it around is to position and size my layers within the space. And to do that, we can use our transform or animation tools. The animation tools then become active inside my top and my side view. So looking at the camera view, I can see there's my sky, but what I want to do with the sky is I want to take the sky and pull it really far back in space. So if I make the sky layer my active layer, and I can choose layers in this little thumbnail view off to the side so I don't have to go back to my timeline, which is really cool. So I click on the sky layer. I have my translate tool active. If your animation, advanced animation tools aren't showing, right click and choose advanced animation and that will make those tools visible. Now with my sky layer active, I want to push it back in space. But if I push it back in space and move it over, we can see how this is causing a problem because how big a sky do I need to draw if I want it way back in space here and I still have it fill in the frame because, wow, that really shrunk down. And that's a problem. Fortunately, Harmony has a remedy for that, and that is the Maintain Size tool. So if I, instead of using the Translate tool, move over in my tools to the Maintain Size tool, now when I push that layer back, I can see in my top view how it's effectively scaling that view. It's making it bigger. So I can keep pushing it back and it's bigger. So now if I fly my camera into my scene, that sky is going to be far enough back that it's not going to shrink smaller than my field of view and that will be very handy and beneficial. I can also take the moon, shove that back. I can take the mountains, shove those back. So now if I take the moon, push it back in space, 
with maintain size. If I were to move it over, we can see the, there's my moon floating around in my view. But if I use the normal translate tool, we can see how it makes it bigger and smaller. Now I could make it a little bit smaller and then I can use maintain size to further push it back in space and then I can use translate to move this over a little bit. Oh, not maintain size, translate. Now I can move it over and I think I probably needed it to actually get a little bit smaller in size because that's awful. Uh, that's a big moon. Or we'll let it stay big, why not? It's animation, we can create whatever reality we want. Now as I want to push things further back and continue with that, I have my mountains. Same way that if I take my mountains and just push them back in space, they shrink way down and that's not really helping my scene. So instead what we want to do again with far off objects, I'll push them way back using maintain size. So they're far back in space. Continuing with the ground, we can push the ground back using maintain size so it grows to cover the ground. And now when it comes time to start moving my individual objects back, these I will probably just want to use translate and push them back and decide where I want them to exist. So I can grab my different elements and once I push it back in space, if I decide it's the size I want it to be relative to my picture, but I need it to go further back, I can use maintain size to keep pushing that back. Now we'll notice that the Z space for this cloud is way back close to the mountains and ground, way behind the temple, even though if I look at my picture I can see that it looks like it's right next to the temple. So we'll be able to go past my temple building quite a ways before we would even have to worry about running into my cloud. Now take my next cloud and I can push that back. Tell I'm happy with the scale and then I'll use maintain size. <laughs> Wrong one. That was the scale not maintain <laughs> size. But I'm going to leave my cloud a little bit um, so I'm going to have the two clouds here with some distance between them so that I have the option when they're moving I'm going to fly my camera through those two clouds and we'll see how we go through one and then get to the next cloud. Continuing this process I'm going to go to my first tree, the one that I had previously just turned off. I'm going to push that back in space and move that over a little bit and we'll let that one be further back then move to my next tree. I'm positioning it, scaling, we can see how I'm stacking the trees because what I want to do is to fly through these trees. So we'll be kind of doing a little bit of uh, pan and zoom as I move across and go between the trees. So we'll get a sense of passing one, then the next, and then the next, and then the bush. Now we do have options that we can pull in front of the picture plane so we pass things much faster, or we can have it, everything is still further back, and then as we go past, we will fly through the picture plane with our camera. 
So once my objects are arranged in space, I can look at it from the top view. I can also look at it from the side view. We can see how it's the same kind of structure. The side view can be useful because as you start looking at how your objects are arranged when you're trying to align their bottoms, the side view allows you to do that. It's much like working in 3D software where you have to keep changing your view because it may look correct from one orientation. You spin it around and realize something is pushing right halfway through a different object or plane that you did not expect. The activity that we're going to do is to add a camera to our project. Uh, with this, it is possible you can have multiple cameras on a project, but you can't have more than one camera at the same time. And the camera is assigned to the camera layer. You only really get one camera layer. We use a control peg to animate it. Having multiple cameras is not overly beneficial in Harmony Essentials. In Harmony Premium, where we have some more camera options and settings we can choose, we could switch between cameras because we're able to change different field of views that the cameras have, as well as play with depth of field. Depth of field is an effect that we can do in Harmony Premium that you can't do in Essentials. So to add in a camera, I can go uh, under Insert. I can choose Camera, or down at the bottom, I click on the plus, and I choose Camera. I get a camera layer. This camera layer does nothing by itself. Until we add a control peg, we can put as many keyframes on it as we want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. But once we do start working with the camera and animating it through a control peg, then the camera itself takes on power. When I look here, we'll see that we don't have a whole lot of uh, options for the camera because again we are running essentials and that's just how it is. After I have my camera layer then I can click on the add peg button. I can go under plus add peg or command P it adds in a peg and it names it camera P meaning camera peg. So if I want to animate my scene here and build this up as I'm looking at what's going on I can extend out my scene and then start adding in some keyframes and fly the camera. While the camera is flying, I can be keyframing layers or pegs or bones or anything else is fully animatable while the camera is going. The camera is just one more animation layer. But this will give us a chance to talk about the two kinds of keyframes that we really haven't looked at before, which is motion and stop motion and start to understand how those come into play. So the first thing I want to do is to take all of my artwork layers and extend those out. We do that with highlighting and hit F5 so my artwork layers have been extended. Layers have been extended, it's time to animate the camera. As we animate the camera, we will want to keep the camera view open so we can see what the camera sees as we start flying it into our scene. I find it's easiest to take my camera, make sure animate is turned on so it's ready to go, and then we can use the different uh, animation tools to fly our camera through our scene. As we do this, I can hit F6, insert my first keyframe. Now as I move further out in time, if I want to take my camera and move it, I can now do so, but there's, there was nothing to grab at that point. And this is where I find working in the main drawing view is not always the easiest place to animate the camera. Oh, I undid my keyframe there. So what I like to do is to be over, say, in the top view and using the translate tools. Now if I move my camera, you'll very quickly see my scene isn't just sliding, but it's sliding in parallax. So as those trees move, we're getting a very different sense of parallax with that camera. So I can pull my frame out and now I've pulled out on my scene. If I move over, I can now change my scene. It looks like I do need to make my sky layer a little bit bigger because we're seeing some background showing and that's going to be an easy enough fix and we can worry about that in a little bit. 
Now if I move to a different point in time, I want to start pushing my camera in and I'm going to go past the bush to the trees. Now as I do that, we'll see how the camera is moving into that scene. Scene and I've moved forward with the camera. Moved across. Sometimes it's almost tricky to uh, go slow enough as you move it because the parts fly really fast. But as I do this, now if I want to transition that after I get to this point, my next shot I want to be right at the front of the building with the building front and center. What I don't want to have happen is I don't want it to animate it. I don't want to do that. I want to just cut to that frame. And we have two kinds of keyframes that we're able to use. We have motion and stop motion keyframes. And you can see in your toolbar on your timeline it usually has the icons. The one with the little squiggle curve and the straight line between it. So if I go to the previous frame and choose stop motion We'll see inside my timeline, when I do that, the black line connecting those two keyframes indicating it's a motion keyframe disappeared. So if it's a motion keyframe, we see the line. Stop motion, it means it's going to get to this point, hold for five frames, and then immediately transition to that next keyframe. When I do that, we'll see how it creates that cut. If I hit play, you can see how it creates a much more abrupt. Now just move that out so we can watch it happening a little bit faster or slower. So you can see how it creates that jump. So we can do jump cuts as well as smooth movements and camera transitions depending on the kind of keyframe that we have. So if it's a motion keyframe, then if I move my shot, we'll see we get that motion. But if the keyframe is a stop motion, the line disappears, it does the jump cut. And sometimes it can be more effective to jump to a particular part on your scene than to smoothly pan or zoom into that element. So now that I have gotten to my building, I want to fly right through it. So I'm going to go out a couple frames and then just push the camera right through into the clouds, pull the camera back up a little bit, and fly through. And now we've created a very, it's not enough frames to show that, so I'll extend that out a little bit.